One of the most closely guarded secrets of the Cold War was America's role in supporting Afghan warlords known as the Mujahideen. The official story is that America backed these fundamentalists in response to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in December 1979. But that's not true. It was six months before the Soviet invasion, in July of that year, that President Jimmy Carter authorized $500 million to help set up the Mujahideen, a terrorist organization. The American people were completely unaware that their government, together with the British Secret Service, MI6, had begun training and funding Islamic extremists, including Osama bin Laden. Out of this came the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and September the 11th. Soon after the Taliban came to power in 1996, the administration of Bill Clinton backed a secret plan for a pipeline through Afghanistan from Central Asia, which has vast reserves of oil and gas. The Taliban were offered a generous cut in the deal and secretly invited to Washington and Texas. They were treated royally, taken shopping and flown to tourist attractions like the NASA Space Center and Mount Rushmore. Their tour was so secret that no television news covered it. Most Americans knew nothing. By the time George W. Bush came to power, the link between Al-Qaeda and the Taliban was an embarrassment, and September the 11th gave Bush an opportunity to get rid of them. Today, Afghanistan is run by a regime installed by the Americans, and the pipeline deal is going ahead. September the 11th also presented an opportunity to an influential group who even by Republican Party standards were extreme. Ray McGovern is a former senior officer of the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, and a personal friend of George Bush Sr., the president's father. The same people who are running U.S. policy now are people that the president's father kept at arm's length. They were, they, they were referred to uh, in the circles in which I moved when I was briefing at the top intelligence and policy levels. They were referred to as the crazies. The crazies. I mean, you talk about the crazies, everyone knew who they were. Richard Pearl, Paul Wolfowitz, Doug Feith, those folks. The crazies also include Donald Rumsfeld, seen here in Baghdad in 1986, warmly greeting Saddam Hussein, who was then being armed to the teeth by America and Britain. This is one of their blueprints, published in 2000 by the extreme right-wing group Project for a New American Century. The US military will fight multiple simultaneous wars as the cavalry on the New American frontier. The principal author is William Crystal. The problem with America is not that we go around marauding around the world imposing ourselves. Mm. The problem with America in the last 10, 15 years since the end of the Cold War, really in the last 60 years, is that we've been too slow to get involved mm. in mm. conflicts. Outside America, people have worried about uh, the United States uh, conducting an unprovoked attack on a country, a sovereign country. Whether are they? Or not, whether, are they? Yes, yes, they are. Really? They're yeah. worried we're going to attack Britain, France, no, Germany, no, no, any, no, any democracy? No, no, because... Any no, decent regime? No, the, well, no, the United States doesn't uh, usually attack strong countries. Do we attack decent countries? No, I said strong countries. Why well, asking decent countries? I don't know Are what people you would really call, worried I, the U.S. is going I, to go, I, I, a decent law-abiding country, and the U.S. I, is going to come in and say, we don't like the look of you, we're going to depose you? Is that something the U.S. has done quite often? How I, many countries has the U.S. attacked uh, in the last been, 15 been, years? Uh, well, since World War II, there have been 72 interventions by the United States. Oh, is that right? Yes. That's ludicrous. Well, it's not ludicrous, it's true. These are some of the countries where the United States, directly and indirectly, has overthrown governments manipulated elections, and attacked popular movements since 1945. Bush's war on terror is just another brand name replacing the Red Menace as justification for a systematic aggression. This is well documented 
Yet it remains a kind of secret history, seldom reported in the West, as a war of terror. As we and our coalition partners are doing in Afghanistan, we will bring to the Iraqi people food and medicines and supplies and freedom. And in this great conflict, my fellow Americans, we will see freedom's victory. <laughs>